The chairman of the Investment Development Authority of Nagaland, Abu Mehta, has uh, spoken to media persons on the sidelines of the inaugurations of two CSR projects here at Rhododendron Hall. Now, uh, Nagaland News Network has questioned him on uh, exactly the uh, most important part of the program where an MOU was signed with SBI for the initiative of Tourism Connect. Now, uh, he has spoken about exactly in depth what exactly is this Tourism Connect and he has also spoken about why only uh, Chumugadima village and Sovima was chosen uh, for the uh, solar street light, whereas rural areas in Nagaland have been uh, abandoned in regard to development activities such as setting up and installation of solar street lights. Let's have a look at what he has to say. Today the MOU was signed with uh, the SBI in regard to Tourism Connect uh, for Nagaland. So can you please explain a little bit, a little bit more in depth on what exactly is Tourism Connect? So uh, I don't know whether you're aware, but uh, some time back we had given an advertisement in the newspapers uh, asking for people in the tourism sector, tour operators, uh, uh, stakeholders in tourism to apply for this Tourism Connect scheme. What we're trying to do is uh, the state government will give 20% subsidy for purchase of premium taxis and the rest of the amount will be extended to a financial institution through a soft loan where the interest rate is very low and there are no mortgages uh, uh, involved and there will be no service charges and the payment for the moratorium period will be longer. So basically, uh, we're trying to be um, less economically strenuous on the tourism industry stakeholders, where they can uh, procure these high-end uh, uh, premium taxes for their businesses to grow. Okay, so, so this will be uh, applicable during the Hornbill Festival? Is it going to be immediate? No, that's what we're trying to do, but as you all know, we run into bureaucracy, red tape, due diligence. We're following all that. Our target was uh, before Hornbill Festival, but there's still the MOU was signed today. We hope to clear all uh, formalities within the next few days. Then we get into the, uh, the manufacturers to vehicles for deliveries. So the target was that, but I don't know whether we'll be able to meet a deadline. But even then, the program will go ahead. Uh, so you had mentioned during your speech that uh, in the tourism sector, the rural persons, people are the stakeholders yeah. when it comes to tourism. So, so in our own state, we have a lot of nitty-gritty issues that, is, that has been happening, especially with the ENPO, and they have cited that, especially during the Hornbill Festival, such a big event, that they won't take part because they've been mistreated. Uh, in quotes, I would say. So, so, so if they are the real stakeholders, is the government planning to change that outlook of theirs or is it still going to be the same? Well, of course, I don't represent the tourism department, mm -hmm. uh, first of all. So maybe I'm not the best person to clarify on this. But what I know is that uh, these issues have been brought uh, to the state government. And even last year, the chief minister had a series of meetings with them. This year, the chief minister had a meeting with them. He had also met uh, representatives of the uh, Eastern uh, uh, elected members. Tourism department has had meeting with them, I think in these very halls yes. some time back. So uh, I'm sure they're addressing the issues, how to best resolve. Mm -hmm. It's not an ideal world, it's not perfect. Mm -hmm. Problems will be faced, not just, I think, by people of the Eastern region, but from the other areas also. Everybody contributes to it, not just the Eastern. Mm -hmm. Every part, as I said earlier, every citizen of the state is a stakeholder in our policy of land of festivals and the Hornbill Festival. So we have to work collectively. It's not ideal. There will be problems. There will be rough edges, but we have to trash them out and uh, address them together as one. Uh, so um, the Joint Secretary had said that, of course, the investors come here and strategically Chumukadima is placed in such a way that, you know, you can show their areas and the location of to bring development. And yes, agreed, but definitely our rural areas need more of the development and need more such things as solar light, street lights. So, sir, and you had, of, of course, reiterated his, but with some more details. But then at the same time, if donors are not, uh, they don't believe in this areas, like uh, in the words of the Joint Secretary, as much, but then they went through with it, um, like Sovima and Chomgadima, in a place like this, how will they believe in rural areas to invest in such areas when they do not believe in a place like Chomgadima? I don't think he said that. Uh, I don't think he said that. But let me make it very st uh, straightforward. We needed to put up uh, projects here mm -hmm. so that corporates and uh, re their representatives can come in and see how it's implemented. Our target is not here. Our target is to take this type of projects to the most interior areas where it's most needed, mm -hmm. in, into the backward districts, into the eastern areas, and the interior parts of Nagaland. 
But we have to start somewhere and we have to build confidence for the corporates. They can see that we're implementing it in a transparent manner and also the minimum standards are met. Quality is not compromised. That is the reason why these areas were selected, one. Also, the vendors selected this place based on the pitch made by the villagers. We only facilitated. But we're happy that these two villages were selected. Mm -hmm. We'll be able to showcase it to the corporate sector. Mm -hmm. And the next phase, if we get more CSR support, mm -hmm. I am assuring you, it will go to the most backward areas. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's good to hear, sir. And what is IDAN's, lastly, what, what is IDAN's future plans? In the near future, what is the other big project that is going to happen in Nagaland? I think you have to sit with me for a long, long time to understand <laughs> what we're planning. But uh, I can't say we have big, big projects or small projects in hand, but we're relentlessly working, trying to bring investments into Nagaland. Many challenges, many hurdles, but uh, with the support of the chief minister, the state government, we're hopeful that more investments will come in. Uh, we're planning an investment summit sometime early next year. I think it's best to wait for that and know what we're bringing in. All right. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you.